We welcome you to the All-State Game of the Week from Durham, North Carolina. It's the ACC on ESPN. We are playing some high-stakes football in mid-November on the campus of Duke University. You haven't said that very much in the past couple of decades. <laughs> you look at the ACC standings. For Duke, it's simple. If the Blue Devils win today and win out, Duke will play Florida State in the ACC championship game. Dari told you about that Virginia Tech-Maryland game. If Virginia Tech were to lose and Miami were to win out, the Hurricanes would play Florida State in the ACC title game. Those are the stakes. Simon E. Schropp, he's Kelly Stauffer, former first-round pick. And Kelly, with this Duke football program, it has become one of the great stories in college football, what David Cutcliffe has managed to do in transforming a culture in Durham. As an athlete, it's an amazing moment when you go from kind of thinking you can do something to actually expecting to do something. We're watching Duke's entire football program make that transition. A delight to watch. It seems every time Duke takes the field, it's another milestone checked off. Yeah, beat a ranked opponent. Virginia Tech went down in Blacksburg and Bullock. Another bowl game and a winning season. They've already done that. And look at the last two things on the list right there, Anish. They are dreaming here in Durham, and it's all thanks to the head coach, David Cutcliffe. In the four years prior to Cutcliffe taking over the Duke program, this team won a total of four games. They're currently on a five-game win streak. Meanwhile, for Miami, the Hurricanes have lost two in a row. Duke Johnson out for the season. Philip Dorsett still out with a knee injury. Those are their top big play guys. That means more is on the shoulders of Stephen Morris, the quarterback. Yeah, exactly right, Anish. And I think the explosiveness is what Stephen Morris is looking for. They have to find ways to get big chunks. I don't th think they're efficient enough to drive the football consistently well. Duke won the toss. The Blue Devils defer, so Miami will receive to start things out. The Hurricanes 9-1 all-time against the Blue Devils. Al Golden in his third season as Miami's head coach. The Hurricanes self-imposed a postseason ban the past two years. NCAA sanctions came down in October. No bull ban this year, so Miami with a chance to go to the postseason for the first time in the Golden Era. Here is Stacy Coley. Fumbled a punt against Virginia Tech. Takes this one out to the 24-yard line, and we get our first look at this Hurricanes offense. The quarterback, Stephen Morris, he's had a nagging ankle injury. We've heard it's in the Achilles area from our sources, but against Virginia Tech, like you said, Kelly, showed some great sides and some great progress, 324 yards, two touchdowns against a very good defense last week. Yeah, great arm talent. It's just that throwing starts from the ground up, and if you don't feel good on your plant foot where you have to drive forward, he tends to get a little inaccurate. We'll see if that affects him here this afternoon. Play action on first down. Morris to the air. Duke was beat, but it's incomplete. Herb Waters, the intended target. Without Duke Johnson, without Philip Dorsett, Miami doesn't have its top big play threats. Offensive coordinator James Coley said that doesn't mean they're not going to take chances deep. That's their M.O. Yeah, James Coley is all about the vertical passing game, and Duke Johnson represented more of their short to mid-range pass game by just his explosiveness in out of that backfield. That was a huge missed opportunity early in this game for Miami. Ross Cockrell, starting at corner for Duke, did not play the last week against NC State. He's their best DB. Here is Dallas Crawford. He's now the feature back with leading rusher Duke Johnson out for the season with a fractured ankle. Crawford picks up four and third and six coming up. And what we're going to see out of Miami today, we've already talked about it. It's taking vertical shots down the field. But when they need something that they're comfortable with, they go behind this massive offensive line that averages about 315 pounds. We'll see how Duke's front four handle that today. Empty backfield on third down and five. Good protection. Morris completes to Waters, and that's a first down to the 35-yard line, a gain of seven. And that's a good, good early sign. Waters just kind of found that void in the zone and the accurate pass by Morris. And if Morris gets comfortable, and they're going to have to keep the pocket clean and keep people away from his feet, 
He has tremendous arm talent. Second carry for Crawford. And he's to the 44-yard line, a gain of eight yards. Sometimes as a quarterback, when you lose your ex explosive elements, Duke Johnson's a dynamic electric running back, he's gone. And then Philip Dorsett was the guy that could consistently take the top off the coverage. And when a quarterback doesn't have that, you kind of get a little wobbly figuring out where you're going to get this chunk yard. You saw Morris had great numbers against Duke last year. Crawford runs for the first down, a gain of six. Go back to the North Carolina game when Duke Johnson suffered a mild concussion. Dallas Crawford was asked to carry the load. Did so with 33 carries and 137 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He just doesn't have the home run ability that Duke does. Yeah, that's the difference. Crawford is a grinder. Duke Johnson could take it into the end zone on any given play. Duke flashed a safety blitz. A little trickery. Wide open is Crawford. And he's to the 21 yard line. That is a 30 yard gain. So Miami with a little trickeration. And the handoff and the pitch back. And the guy who touched the ball originally was Crawford. And that's exactly who Duke's defense forgets. Ends up running a wheel route down the sideline. Very well executed. Eduardo Clements comes in to spell Crawford. Miami in its Stormtrooper uniforms. Morris checks down, completes to Clements. And there is a penalty marker on the play. Ineligible receiver downfield, number 46, was covered up on the play. It's a five-yard penalty, first down. That's the tight end, Clive Walford. And he was covered up, so essentially he becomes an ineligible receiver. Can't go downfield any more than an offensive lineman can, and a big mistake right there. But the personality of Duke's defense, Anish, as we've seen throughout the year, is they just find a play. They find a play to get off the field. They need one right here as Miami has marched this ball into the red zone. Empty backfield on first and 15. Morris, a screen pass. And that's the true freshman, Stacy Foley, who took a short pass, 81 yards for a score against Virginia Tech last week. And Miami, as they always do, they have the speed element out there on both sides of the ball. They always do. It's just been inconsistent in terms of pass catchers to be able to finish drives. They've had trouble in this part of the game right here. Seventy-seven percent in the red zone on the year. They've only scored about sixty-five percent touchdown wise. Duke needs to find a play defensively to get off the field. Morris with time completes near side and that's Coley once again for a gain of five. So third down and about six coming up for Miami. We saw Jeremy Cash right there the first time today. You can see the red zone numbers. First seven games versus the last two. Obviously a different story. But how do they, Duke Johnson was the finisher in the red zone. They don't have that element now. Five wide on third down. And Duke's defense has been very good in the red zone this season. And Walford right down here, the big tight end, could become Stephen Morris's favorite target down here. Duke brings pressure. Morris has to throw it away. It's incomplete and fourth down coming up for Miami. But just watch all the pressure coming up inside right there. Just move Morris's feet. Get the time ticking just a little bit faster and he throws that ball away. That's the play that Duke was looking for defensively. 32-yard attempt from Matt Gutis. He's missed three of his last five field goal attempts. Seven of 11 on the season. 
Kudis drills it from 32. Miami scores on its opening drive. A 32-yard field goal from Matt Kudis. David Cutcliffe's Duke offense will get the ball when we come back. Christmas was magical. Let's get back there. At Bass Pro Shop Santa's Wonderland, kids can get a free picture with Santa. And you can shop early for great deals on great gear and all the brands you're wishing for. Let's not wait for Black Friday. Let's do an upgrade. Let's pull up the A-list. Find the one. Let's double down on double doors. Let's shop. Let's save. Let's do it early. The Black Friday crowds can have their day. We'll already have our appliances. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. These Maytag or GE Energy Star washers, your choice, just $3.99. Tonight on ESPNU, American Championship hopes hang in the balance as powerhouse offenses collide. Here's one. Going for it all. Touchdown, Louisville. Houston, Louisville. Tonight at 7 on ESPNU. College football lives here. <laughs> and the best part of it is, is when you win one, you know you're going to win another one. That's the mentality you got to. If you can, if you can win one, you're going to win another one. And, and then you got something called a program, and, and that's what we're hunting. David Cutcliffe is one of few in a row, five in a row. If the Blue Devils were to win today, it would be Duke's first eight-win season since 94, and only the third eight-win season for Duke in the last half century. Yeah, unbelievable. But what Coach Cutcliffe is, is he's a foundational man. The culture that he's talking about is laying a foundation so then you can begin to build on top of that. He said that once you do that, the results are sure to follow. And right now, the kids are in the process of understanding what the results feel like and look like. It's a great thing to see. When we spoke to players and coaches yesterday, they said in the past, when they had Miami on the schedule, they looked at it as a game they hoped to win. Now Duke looks at Miami as a game they know they can win. Here's last week's hero, Devon Edwards, who gave that a look and then let it bounce into the end zone and out of the end zone. So Duke starts from its own 25-yard line. Anthony Boone will get the start at quarterback. He struggled the last couple of games. In his past two contests, no touchdown passes, seven interceptions. Head coach Dave Cutcliffe told us, Boone will get the first two series. Backup Brandon Kinnett will come on for the third series, and then they'll see who will finish the game. On senior day, Jawan Thompson, the lone senior tailback, gets the start. Boone on first down, finds Jamison Crowder, and Crowder to the 29-yard line. Crowder, one of our impact players, last year against Miami, 203 yards, including a 99-yard touchdown reception. Yeah, and he's going to have to have those type of numbers here today. He needs to be the big play guy, and then Jenkins, you see on the other side, is that big play safety. He can blow things up in the run game, but he's also very, very good in coverage. Going on second down, and that's incomplete. So third and six coming up. Problem with Boone, the last couple of games, he hasn't been going through his progressions. And that's the key right there, Anish. You're exactly right. You can have an idea of what you want to do pre-snap, but you can't make a decision before you have the ball in your hand. You have to do it post-snap. Brandon Connect, we will see him probably on the third series, but they really need 
Anthony Boone to play well. And you can see right there, the struggles of a quarterback trickle right down to that number very quickly. Third downs have been a disaster for Duke in its last two games. Four-man rush. Boone's throw incomplete intended for Max McCaffrey. The freshman already burns on the coverage. And Duke goes three and out on its opening drive. And two inaccurate passes by Anthony Boone. Both of those balls were off target. There wasn't a lot of separation, but those are passes that could have been completed. And that's what you see with a quarterback that is a little unsure of himself. And this Anthony Boone is a streaky guy anyway. So you need him to get hot, and then he can be lights out. Will Monday on to punt. Stacy Coley back deep. Remember, he fumbled a punt in the game against Virginia Tech last week. Coley from inside his own 25. He's got great speed. Coley across midfield, and there he goes. <laughs> 78 yards for a score for Stacy Coley. There is a flag on the play near midfield. Well, the fans here have just realized there is a flag on the play, so now all of a sudden they are hopeful. There is no foul on the play. There's all the play, touchdown. The hope has left the building. That's a great sign for Miami to get a contribution like that on special teams. Three special teams miscues essentially cost them the Virginia Tech game. And for me, the number one question coming into this game is can Duke handle the speed that obviously Miami is going to bring to the table as you see the swinging gate type of formation on the next point. Miami calls everybody back into the field goal formation. Extra point is good, and Miami strikes on special teams. Stacy Coley, what a big blunder last week, atones for it with a 78 yard punt return for a TD. cheap bungee cord. This guy bought me at the gas station. Perfect for holding down the lid on a box of sweaters. With 800 pounds of tailgating gear. Nah. And if you have cut rate insurance, the biggest hit of the day could be to your wallet. So get an Allstate agent and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands? I've got it, sweetie. Forty-year-old tradition to keep. I hope we make it. We'll make it. Winter is the season to bring family together. Visit the Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event for the best offers of the season, including an Infinity Q50 for $369 a month. First, we introduce the new standard in side-by-side -side utility. Now we're giving it company. They share the most torque, the smoothest suspensions, the best storage, and a revolutionary collection of accessories. The 60-horsepower Ranger XP900 and 5-passenger Ranger Crew 900. Together, they're a whole new class of hardest working, smoothest riding. Huge rebates and low financing available now during the Polaris Holiday Sales Events. The Fantasy Sports Hall of Fame presents former accountant Derek Bradley. DraftKings One Day Fantasy Football took him from a guy with holes in his underpants to a guy with bikini models in them. How do they do it? DraftKings.com. They have one day games, so you're not locked in. It's like a new season every time you play. And best of all, you could win a boatload of money. Use promo code KICK to play and get free entry into the Millionaire Grand Final. Be crowned a fantasy football millionaire. Get to DraftKings.com. Al Golden has to like what he's seeing from special teams early on. A field goal for Matt Gudis 
on Miami's first drive, and then Stacy Coley, a 78-yard punt return before we went to break. Yeah, and there's no substitute for speed on the football field. And you see right there, just a simple middle return set up the blockers a little bit by going to the right, but it was well designed, and then Coley knows what to do with it. Big play by Miami, and Mike Tyson just threw a haymaker. Can Duke survive it? Into and out of the end zone for a touchback. Duke ball at its own 25. We check in with Dari. Guys, you got to watch this here. UCF trailing Temple, 1 and 8 Temple by a touchdown late. Blake Bortles to JJ Warden and watch the remarkable catch. One handed back in the end zone ties the game at 36. Less than 30 seconds to go. Now, Jameis Winston and Florida State on the board first, thanks to James Wilder Jr. Florida State up on Syracuse. Virginia Tech headed to overtime against Maryland, guys. Thank you, Dari. Here's Josh Sneed. Duke will rotate about four back. Sneed is the fastest one. He was down after a gain of about nine. It's going to be close to a first down, and now it is a first down. Yeah, and with a successful first down play, this is where Duke likes to go up tempo to try to gain some momentum like they're doing right here. Miami set on defense on first and ten. So it's back to Sneed. He powers his way close to midfield, a gain of 14. Josh Sneed averages a team best 5.8 yards per carry. Talking to their offensive coordinator, Kurt Roper, he said he's not sure half the time who's in the game as a running back. They've got four guys they'll use, and they'll change them out quite often. And now a whistle. Full start, number 72 offense. Five yards, first down. That's the right tackle, Perry Simmons, who's making his 47th consecutive start. One of two seniors on that veteran Duke O-line along with Dave Harden. Yeah, Duke offensive line that the first five have started every game together this season. That's one reason this kind of miracle season is still intact. Boom completes to senior Brandon Blackston. And he's in a Miami territory, a gain of 11. It'll bring up second and about four. And if Duke could find another wide receiver in this game to go with Jamison Crowder, who is a tremendous go-to type of guy, Braxton could be the, it. Here's Jalay Duncan, the team's leading rusher, and he's going to be close to a first down. Depends on the spot here. And so far on this drive, a, a great response by Duke's offense. And this is what Duke has the ability to do is to drive the football efficiently in order to get points. I don't think Miami can do that offensively without big chunks. Duke has that mentality. Third and short, no, make it first and 10. Boom, checks down to Crowder. He's got a first down and Jamison Crowder States out of bounds at the 23-yard line, a gain of 18 yards. Crowder enters this game tied for first in the conference in reception, second in receiving yards. Very patient throw that time. Anthony Boone finding Crowder clear, clear across the formation against that soft zone coverage by Miami. Duncan breaks one tackle and then stood up with a 20 by Denzel Perryman, who had some help from... That Miami defensive front. And Anish Duke has been very good at closing out things in the end zone when they get down in this territory. 69% is tremendous at scoring touchdowns when they get down here. We told you Duke rotates its running backs. Shaquille Powell now in the game, the third running back Duke has used on this drive. Boom throws. He's got his tight end, Braxton Deaver. Deaver marked out of bounds at the 15 yard line. I like the decisiveness. That time it was kind of a high low type of concept in the route, and Deaver was open initially in the flat, banging the ball and see what happens. Great positive throw. Third and two, Brandon Kinnett checks into the game. This isn't a major change. This is what Duke does. He's the short yardage guy. 
We told you Kinnett was expected to play on Duke's third series. Kinnett flies forward for a first down. There is a flag that comes in at the end of the play. That came in late. You would assume it's going to be face mass. It should take Duke down to half the distance to the goal. But you're right. Kinnett is really a tight end playing the quarterback position in that situation. He's a very efficient runner. He's not the quick twitch type of guy in the run game that Boone can be, but he's a physical presence in that run game. One of the reasons Duke has been so good in the red zone this year is because of Kinnett. There is no foul on the play. Second time that's happened, we need to start flagging the officials. Yeah, they need to be a little more patient throwing that yellow thing onto the field. Kinnett's going back in, and this is his territory. Kind of deep red zone, short yardage type of plays. And Boone is down here, which I really actually don't like the quarterback in there. If you're not going to use him, get him off the field and get a more dynamic playmaker down there. And that hands it off this time. Shaquille Powell inside the five with a two. Kinnett started three games when Anthony Boone was out with a broken collarbone. He's accounted for 20 touchdowns this year, rushing and passing. Kinnett stays in the game. On second and short, Kinnett right up the middle for his ninth TD of the year, and Duke is on the board. touchdown this season 26th of his career and as we said that's why Duke has been so good once they get inside the red zone Miami threw the haymaker on the punt return by Coley and Duke desperately needed a response this one takes it down close and then Brandon connect as he's done all year pays it off what an answer by Duke Monday Night Football, Patriots, Panthers, 825 Eastern on ESPN. It's not your fault you chose Coke Zero in college game day over cleaning the gutters. You'll never accidentally find a beehive while learning about zone coverage. Safety first. With real Coke taste and zero compromise, enjoy everything. Energizer Max batteries are designed to hold power for up to 10 years. With the help of Power Seal technology, You'll always have power when you need it most. That's positive energy. Tomorrow, an entire NASCAR season comes down to one race. With Jimmy on the brink, will he further his legacy among the all-time greats? Or can Harvick or Kenseth make their own history? The Ford EcoBoost 400 at Homestead, Miami. Tomorrow at 1 on ESPN. This is the computer ICU. It's what happens to your computer when it gets infected, slows down, and crashes. And if you don't do something, your computer could wind up here in the computer graveyard. But it could be saved with MyCleanPC.com. Is your computer running slow? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes, and crashes? Then go to MyCleanPC.com for your free diagnosis today. Then just activate the MyCleanPC.com software to fix it in minutes. And computer specialists are available while you're online. The best thing about MyCleanPC.com was it had a free diagnosis. My computer is 100% faster. You know immediately what the problem is, and the problem is solved right then and there. Download your free diagnosis today at MyCleanPC.com. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. 
Brought to you by Allstate Insurance. Proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? Duke senior left guard Dave Harding on senior day. These Duke seniors, their final home game represents Duke's biggest home game in about 20 years. How about that? 19 wins for this senior class. You go back to 2000. That senior class had six wins. Stacy Coley popped shy of the 25-yard line after a 21-yard return. Coley appears to be down. Remember, Philip Dorsett already out for Miami. Coley is really their top big play threat with Dorsett out in the receiving game. Duke Johnson also injured. Coley had a 78-yard punt return for a touchdown earlier in this quarter. Yeah, and Stephen Morris is looking for some a comfort level in the pass game, and Coley certainly brings that big play ability. I think Cleve... Walford, the tight end, can become that for Morris, but they need a vertical threat, and Coley was certainly it. I think he runs into the back of, of number one that was getting blocked into him right there. It's just a door that closed more quickly than Coley anticipated. And that was quite a collision. Domino effect. Shaquille Powell leveled Artie Burns, and it was Artie Burns who Coley ran into. 6.16 to go here in the first quarter. Trainers attending to Stacy Coley. Well, we have a moment. We're going to check in with the studio and Dari Noka. Guys, we showed you UCF miraculously tied Temple. Now, here it is. Last chance for UCF. Tie game, 19 seconds to go. Ronell Hall gets behind the Temple D. The catch, 62 yards down to the five, led to a Sean Moffitt field goal for the win, and UCF avoids disaster at Temple. Maryland just won the game at Virginia Tech in overtime. We'll show it to you in a minute, guys. Well, for Miami fans, that is gigantic. Maryland's win in OT against Virginia Tech means this game now, Miami and Duke, essentially for first place in the ACC Coastal. We knew going in, if Duke won out, the Blue Devils would play for the ACC Championship with Virginia Tech's loss. The same now holds true for Miami. If the Hurricanes win out, they can get to the ACC Championship. That's something Miami has never done since joining this conference. Stacy Coley helped off the field. Hurricanes will have the ball at the 24-yard line. They've got a 10-7 lead. And all of a sudden, the stakes just went up for Miami. I'm sure a lot of Hurricane fans were monitoring that Virginia Tech Maryland game on their phones or tablets or computers. Play action. Morris with time, throws far side. That's caught, and it's Allen Hearns, the sure-handed senior. And there's a flag at the end of the play. Personal foul, face mask, number 33 defense, 15 yards out into the end of the play, first down. That's DeAndre Singleton, who had a career high 10 tackles in Duke's last game against NC State. So Miami will move up 15 yards from the tail end of that play, and the Canes in business. They'll be in Duke territory. And that's exactly what Duke's defense cannot afford to do. Miami is challenged right now in coming up with things that they can consistently do well to drive the football so the last thing you want to do is give them 15 yards like Duke just did out of the eye here's Gus Edwards and Edwards across the 40 yard line picks up six Gus Edwards seven carries against Virginia Tech Miami wants to get him the ball more he's now really the number two guy 
behind Dallas Crawford with Duke Johnson injured. I think Miami has an injured offensive lineman right there, number 65, Brandon Linder. Looks like he's banged up just a little bit, but that last personnel grouping is exactly what I think Miami wants to do. They want to get behind that massive offensive line with their physical running back that Gus Edwards is and just pound away at Duke's front. We check in again with Dari. Guys, here's how it ended in Blacksburg, Virginia Tech and Maryland. Overtime, Maryland with a chance to win it on the three. C.J. Brown, nowhere to throw, so he takes off for the corner, extends the ball, hits the pylon. Maryland beats Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. That means, as you've said, the winner of your game right now controls destiny in the Coastal. Guys. Indeed, stakes just went up at least for Miami. Maryland now bowl eligible for the first time in the Randy Edsel era with the win. Here's Herb Waters on the bubble screen. Tackled from behind by Jeremy Cash. The Ohio State transfer has been a guy the Duke defensive coaches love because of his playmaking ability. Yeah, Cash is the type of athlete that is rarely seen at Duke, at least until these days. Transferring from Ohio State and 6'2", 210 pound safety that can run like the wind and you saw it on that play. Third and four Miami on the season. 39% on third downs, one for two today. And with Stephen Morris's inability to move around much, empty set, I totally ignore the threat of quarterback draw and play coverage right here if I'm Duke defensively. Morris, quick throw. He's got Allen Hearns, and that's a first down for Miami. A gain of eight. Hearns coming off a four-catch, 142-yard performance against Virginia Tech. That included an 84-yard TD. And Duke is trying to play mainly zone on the back end. That's why you saw David Hilton, the linebacker, kind of matched up or the nearest defender on Hearns on that play. Morris to Malcolm Lewis, and he could not hold on as Jeremy Cash had a beat on him, second and ten. It's a good sign for Duke defensively, Anish, that Jeremy Cash is flashing early in this game because he's the type of athlete that Miami is awash with. They have a ton of players just like Cash on their side, and it's that athletic speed that Miami brings that Duke has to match up well today. Two tight ends on second down. That's Dallas Crawford on the call. Crawford, nice cut back. He's close to the 20-yard line, a gain of eight, third and short. Well, Miami going to more of a power type of play, going that direction. Cleve is just going to, Cleve Walford is just going to lead the play outside. And that's the power mentality that Miami has up front. They want to lean on Duke defensively. Play action. Here's the fullback, Hagans. And wrapped up immediately by Kelby Brown, but it's a first down for Miami. Nice tackle by Brown. May have saved first and goal or maybe a touchdown there. And Miami runs really a pro style set most of the time, and they want to arrive at balance in some form. We talked about their vertical pass game, but the other thing you get out of a pro style set is the fullback figuring into the pass game like we saw right there. Stacy Coley took that big spill on the kick return. So Miami without Coley in the receiving game right now. Philip Dorsett still out. Here's Herb Waters. Waters trying to hurdle a defender, tripped up by DeAndre Singleton. Herb Waters, DeAndre marked down at the eight yard line. We talked about it the last time Miami was down here offensively. Clive Walford is that tight end that should be a tremendous weapon down here deep in the red zone. Big body, 6'4", almost 260 pounds. He's flanked out right there in that slot. Three tight ends in the game. Here's Edwards. He's to the five, a gain of three.
First and goal, Miami. Ten points on the board. 32-yard field goal by Matt Gudis. A 78-yard punt return by Stacy Coley. Looking for six more here. Dallas Crawford back in the game at tailback. He's got ten rushing touchdowns. And this is the tough matchup. The offensive line for Miami outweighs the defensive front for Duke by 40-plus pounds per man. Morris wants Waters. Touchdown, Miami. Well designed. Waters is going to end up going outside after Lewis, number nine, comes inside right there. Somewhat of a pick play, and then he goes to the pylon in the back of the end zone. Very well executed by Miami's offense right there. Waters at a 65-yard touchdown catch against Duke last year. Only had three catches in his last two games entering this one. Four already today. And Stephen Morris has looked extremely sharp in this first quarter. Ten plays, 76-yard drive capped by a Stephen Morris touchdown pass to the sophomore from Homestead, Florida, Herb Waters. The light bulbs in your house were invented by Thomas Edison in 1879. Now think about that with your 2013 brain. Do you still do the wash down at the creek while your eldest son stands lookout for wolves? No, you don't. This is a Cree LED bulb. It lasts 25 times longer. Nostalgia is dumb. The Cree LED bulb. At Echo, we believe you should never settle for less than professional-grade outdoor power equipment. During the Echo Trade-Up and Save event, you can buy this Echo blower for less than $160 at participating retailers. Echo. Get serious. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. The ACC Coastal, try figuring this division out. Georgia Tech lost to Clemson Thursday night. Virginia Tech lost to Maryland earlier today. So Duke and Miami, the only teams with two losses in the ACC in the Coastal Division. The winner of this game has the inside track to Charlotte and the ACC Championship, where they will likely be sacrificial lambs to Florida State. I feel confident, at least right now, saying that. <laughs> Yeah, you said that with a little bit of confidence. 17 to 7, Miami looking good right now after back-to-back -back losses to Florida State and Virginia Tech. And another touchback for Gouda. So Devon Edwards, who took a kick back 100 yards last week, has not had a chance so far today. At 7 Eastern on ESPNU, Houston takes on Louisville. Both of those teams with one loss in conference play. Both lost to Central Florida, then at 10.30 Eastern, San Jose State and Nevada, both games on the U. Well, we told you Brandon Kinnett would come out to start the third series for Duke. He does, as you see the quarterback comparison with John O'Corn and Teddy Bridgewater in that 7 p.m. ESPNU game. And there is Kinnett, who scored Duke's lone touchdown, a rushing touchdown on the Blue Devils' last drive. Hands it off on first down. It's Jalei Duncan to turn the sideline, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 20. And early in the year, Kinnett was probably a wildcat type of quarterback learning how to play the position, but now I think he's fully entrenched as a quarterback at the FBS level and doing a very, very good job. Remember, he started three games when Anthony Green was out with a broken collarbone. There's Jameson Crowder. He's got some speed. Crowder out of bounds after he picks up a first down. Ball now at the 44-yard line of Miami. Isaac Blakeney, number 17, a former tight end, now wide receiver, had a tremendous block out on the edge. That's going to keep this. 
tackled by Anthony Chicolo, junior from Tampa, a Miami legacy player. His dad, Tony, played at the U from 79 to 82, and his grandfather, Nick, was an All-American guard in the 50s. This is Crowder up here, a single high safety look. That might be where Kinnett wants to go. Duncan fights for three. Third down coming up, and now a flag at the end of the play. Holfield number 73 was tied up in kind of a brouhaha after that play. Dave Harding, a very intelligent student athlete, is trying to help the officials figure this one out. We've had a chance to spend some time with him over the course of the year. Great leader, embodies the idea of student athlete. After the play, personal foul, number 26 defense, personal foul, number 73 offense. Those penalties will offset. Third down. That's to Kobe Cofield for Duke and the safety Rayshon Jenkins, number 26 for Miami. Now that's the equivalent by the officials of get your act together, kind of a slap on the wrist of both of them, but it doesn't cost either team, at least this time. Duke one for two on third down today. They had struggled on third downs the last couple of games. Third and three. And there's a flag. Looked like some movement up front on Duke's end. Ball start. 89 offense, five yards, third down. The tight end Braxton Deaver left too early. And it's gonna take those little things being done right by Duke on both sides of the ball. Offensively, we've seen a couple of hiccups and defensively as well. Duke can ill afford to give Miami things that they haven't earned. This is a Miami defense looking to play better as well. They were lit up by Virginia Tech last week. That was a Hokies offense that that struggled quite a bit coming into the game. And on third and eight, Deaver can't hold on, fourth down. And Kinnett went to the right guy. Deaver was open in the flat. Actually would have turned it up Phil for first down yardage and I think that's exactly what got Braxton Deaver in trouble He turned up Phil before he looked the ball into his hands Stacy Coley who left the game with an apparent injury in this first quarter not in on this punt return So this will be Herb Waters and Waters will let it bounce takes a bounce at the 14 yard line and that's where they'll mark it out. So Miami ball from its own 14 after a 28-yard punt. Ten seconds left in this first quarter. As this Miami offense gets ready to make its way back on the field, what's our impact matchup on this end? Well, if Stephen Morris is looking for a go-to receiver, Clive Wofford could easily be that big body tight end that can do that matched up on those two linebackers in Hilton and Brown. Working between the hashes, I think, would be a tremendous matchup, matchup for Miami here today. Since the Coley injury, we've seen more of this. Double tight end sets, more of the fullback. There's Alan Hearns. Hearns tripped up the 24-yard line. There's a flag back at the 19. Yeah, I think Herb Walters was leading on that play, blocking, and I think he's going to get called for the hole. Holding number six offense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. But Anish, that is the matchup that I think is going to be important for Duke defensively. Miami has that fast, kind of sudden element out in space. And Duke is very inexperienced on the back end. They're going to have to tackle well today is Duke on that back end defensively. Inexperienced, but that back end has played very well of late the no last doubt. couple of weeks. I totally agree. More talented. They just haven't had enough birthdays yet, but absolutely they've held up well. First quarter comes to an end, and if you're Al Golden in Miami, You've got to like what you saw in the first 15 minutes. Special teams came through, and Stephen Morris looked good. 11 of 14, 97 yards in a TD.
Belmont, North Carolina, then Oregon State, Maryland. Tomorrow on ESPNU. More Tostitos Cantina tips at table three. Waiter. Mm. Hey, babe, how are you? Oh. What are all these people doing in your apartment? They think it's an actual Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Tostitos Cantina chips and salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. Why is it better to get what you want now instead of later? Because you don't want to wait to eat your raisins. You don't want to wait to eat your raisins? No. Why not? Because they'll turn into a great. Not sure that's the way it works. Yes. Are you competing for cutest kid right now? Yes. And what place are you in? Kindergarten. That's adorable. It's not complicated. Now is better. And AT&T is the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Critics are calling epic, thrilling, and now it's the number one movie in the world. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You're right. Thor, The Dark World, rated PG-13. A normal incandescent bulb uses about $7 worth of energy per year. This Cree LED bulb uses about a buck. If you argue with math, you will lose. The Cree LED bulb. Start of the second quarter here at Wallace Wade Stadium. And East Roth alongside Kelly Stauffer. Miami leading Duke 17 to 7. The winner of this game has the inside track to Charlotte and the ACC championship game. You go back to that first quarter. Miami, unlike last week, strong special teams play. Their quarterback, Stephen Morris, is looking good. I think every time that Miami's had the opportunity to get their speed in space, big things have happened. And that's what Duke has to adjust to. They've responded really well so far. Stacy Coley took a punt back 78 yards for the Hurricanes first touchdown of the game that made it 10 nothing Coley then would leave the game after being injured on a kickoff Brandon Kinnett a touchdown run Dukes only score and then we saw Stephen Morris find Herb Waters Morris 11 of 14 in the first 15 minutes of this game yeah, and that's the cat and mouse you would like to get pressure on Morris and make him move his feet and prove that that ankle is okay but at the same time, that means man-to-man -man on the back end, and I don't know that Duke can hold up. <laughs> Morris. And his fullback, and that's Hagens who breaks the tackle. How about Maurice Hagens? A little love for the fullback. His second catch of the game. There is a flag. Illegal block in the back, number 75 of the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That is Jared Wheeler, the center. He was listed as the co-starter this week on the depth chart, along with Shane McDermott, the junior. Yeah, Wheeler has a ton of starts under his belt, and that just shows you how well Number 62, Shane McDermott has been playing, but the Wiley vet in Wheeler got called for the hold there. But Morris did a very good job. A single high safety with a post route. He went to the outlet fullback, and there was a very successful play. Well done by the quarterback in reading through his progression. Right now they've got McDermott in at center, Wheeler in at guard. Miami moved back, but it was still a first down. Here's Dallas Crawford, and he's upended. Nice tackle by Singleton, a gain of six. Once more, we go to Dari. Anish, how about a conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10 in Tallahassee. It has not been the greatest of weeks for Jameis Winston, but then came Saturday. Touchdown to Rashad Green, 10 for 10 in the first quarter. Florida State up 28 zip on Syracuse. Sorry to inform you, sir. Is that like pregame <laughs> breakfast, or? What, 
Well, I'll tell you what, you know, you've got the story that's been out there, and a lot of folks have been reacting to the headline. It's sort of a wait-and-see approach with what happens with Jameis Winston, but on the field, he seems unflappable. Here's Hearns using the stiff arm. And Hearns into Duke territory, a gain of 13 yards. Fourth catch of the game for Hearns and another Holding flag. Number 74 defense, correction, 74 offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. That's the left tackle, Eric Flowers. So a lot of penalties so far in this game. Yeah, matched up on Kenny Ananicki, number 84 was Flowers and just got called for the hold right off the edge, right there. A good move by Ananicki, and then it was more than the hold, it was the body slam. And Flowers gets called for it. Ananiki is that pressure guy, and that's a, going to prove big time today is can Duke make Stephen Morris move his feet? And in the first quarter, he was very, very comfortable. Four-man rush. Morris again with time, juggled, but holding on to it was Herb Waters, who had the touchdown reception for Miami. On his last drive, a gain of 12, third down coming up. Well, Kelly, you mentioned Kenny Ananiki. Number 84 on that Duke defensive line. He's a sixth-year senior. Yeah, that's the veteran leadership and experience that has really started to pay dividends in this program, and that's exactly what we see here today. Guys like Ananiki are going to have to show up big in order for Duke to get it done. He was a part of Dave Cutcliffe's first recruiting class. Miami three of four on third down so far. There's Malcolm Lewis. Runs into his own man, and he falls what appears to be just shy of the first down marker. So it's going to be fourth and inches. Yeah, I think you're right. Fourth and about six inches. If our line is right, then Miami obviously has liked their matchup on the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line is massive and they've owned things up front in the run game interesting decision if they're short what Al Golden chooses to do here early in the second quarter maybe a little too early to go for it here they just got it it looked like the initial spot was a little short Miami gets it. They move the chains. Another third down conversion. And the offense stays on the field. And David Cutcliffe, you see right there, talked to us about, you know, the thing that his team has figured out is how to make that play that we need. Whatever that play is, they figured out a way to do it. Their defense needs that play right now. That's Hearns in motion. Stephen Moore is 14 of 17. He's completed a pass to five different receivers so far. Crawford finally turned back after a nice pickup five yards so second down and five in on the stop that time 27 to Vaughn Edwards and that's a quintessential Crawford run he is a grinder almost 200 pounds and a lot of yards after contact runs downhill very very well what Stephen Morris is doing there is just looking at the numbers in the box do we have favorable numbers to run it if not we go outside in the pass game back to Crawford tries to get around the edge and that right at the line of scrimmage it'll bring up third down And that might be Ross Cockrell that's down on the ground. Actually, it's not. He had a bad ankle, but it's it's number 31, Breon Borders, that went down. One of those true freshman corners. Cockrell's been banged up. But that young, talented secondary has held up very well. Borders and Brian Fields will see a lot of time back there, along with Cockrell. Devon Edwards had a big game against NC State. They've got Corbin McCarthy, another redshirt freshman in that secondary. And what Miami is doing is they're moving the tight end, Walford, clear outside where the best cover guy 
Cockrell has to take him. And then the mismatch is a linebacker inside on number one, Hearns. That's where Stephen Morris has gone today. over the middle that ball is deflected and intercepted by Duke DeAndre Singleton has it and Singleton tangled shy of midfield to so the first turnover of the game Morris intercepted on third down well we just talked about what Miami wanted to do tight end outside and Hearns inside but the safety does a very good job the youngster Devon Edwards the big play guy blows it up and then another youngster, Singleton, come and cleans it up and finishes the play. Good break on the ball by one freshman and an interception by another freshman. Singleton gets the pick, but it was Edwards who played a hand in that play again. Remember Edwards last week, three non-offensive touchdowns. Took a kick return back, yeah. two pick sixes. That's good stuff, and they may need some of that here today. Brandon Kinnett stays in the game to start the series. Here's Man. Duke's quarterback on the last series. Single high safety means one on one with your best receiver. You have to find him today. There's Shaquille Powell. And he's across the 45 to about the 44. A nice pickup on first down. Second and two. Up tempo again. Positive first down play means put the pedal to the metal. Miami slow to set up. Powell's going to work the middle. He appears to have enough for a first down. He does. Dave Cutcliffe told us Anthony Boone would get the first two series. Brandon Kinnett would get the third, and then he would take it from there. Well, it's Kinnett on Duke's fourth offensive series as Crowder goes in motion. And it is Crowder on the end around. Jamison Crowder breaking a couple of tackles. And he's inside the 30. He is dangerous when he gets the ball in space. Yeah, he sees cuts before they happen. And that's exactly what you saw on that play. Two or three tremendous cuts on that play by Crowder. Dude going quickly. Get on the run. And has to throw it away as he was chased by Shayon Green. Pressure coming by number 51, Shayon Green. Kinnett is a very heady player. Remember, he he was kind of the wildcat guy until the quarterback injuries in spring, and then all of a sudden he got reps. Had to start earlier in the year when Boone went down, and he kind of transitioned from more of a wildcat to managing games better as a true quarterback. Great decision on that play. Kinnett will keep a quarterback draw. That's his bread and butter. And he picks up six, so third down and four coming up for Duke. Blue Devils one for three on third downs. And just four for their last 29 on third downs. And Miami substituting, certainly thinking this is a passing down. They got lighter, got more coverage guys in. It'll be interesting to see what Brandon Kinnett come, does here. Change the launch point and get number 18 outside the pocket. And that's going to take a shot. He's got Powell, who holds on for a touchdown. two games Duke's offense had struggled mightily especially in the passing game no passing touchdowns seven interceptions they seem to be much better in that department and Duke cashing in on a Miami miscue it was an interception off the tip ball by DeAndre Singleton and it leads to this Brandon Kinnett a TD pass to his running back Shaquille Powell we've got a three-point game in Durham
one closed? There's a guy. Excuse me, Glacier Point? Follow me! Follow me! Keep up, keep up, keep up. Look, he's right there! The Nissan Pathfinder. Wow. Follow me! Nissan, innovation that excites. Now get a $279 per month lease on a 2014 Nissan Pathfinder. Golden Corral's Chocolate Wonderfall has been called the eighth wonder of the world. Well, get ready for 9 and 10. Yes, Golden Corral's luscious Chocolate Wonderfall is now joined by sweet caramel and white chocolate balls. It's our new triple fountain yum. Dip crisp red apples, big fudge squares, and more in creamy melted caramel perfection. Drench strawberries, rice crispy treats, and more in non-stop melted white chocolate. And that all comes alongside the legendary and delicious Chocolate Wonderfall. It's our new triple fountain yum, only at Golden Corral. Twas the dad who had to find two gifts mad quick. Phones for twin girls. Yeah, that would be safe. He needed a place with every carrier plan and phone for sale. Twas the mobile holy grail. A plan with unlimited talk, text, and data? Sprint offers one guaranteed for life. Way to go, player. His girls were happy. Twas the world's greatest dad. If I wrote these lines myself, they wouldn't be this. Wouldn't be this. Great gifts like the HTC One at your ultimate holiday show. Best Buy. Quicksilver cash back card from Capital One. It's not the limit the cash I earn every month card. It's not the I only earn decent rewards at the gas station card. It's the no games, no signing up, everyday rewarding, kung fu fighting, silver lightning in a bottle, bringing home the bacon cash back card. This is the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere, every single day. So ask yourself, what's in your wallet? Well, welcome back, everybody, to Durham. A single high safety, and Kanet knows he has one-on-one -on -one coverage with Powell going to the end zone on a linebacker. As long as I throw the right ball, I have six, and Kanet does just that. Very well designed and executed by Duke offensively right there. 17-14, we've got a three-point game as Miami is set to receive. Corn Elder and Herb Waters back deep. Another area where you do miss Duke Johnson. You know, Artie Burns and Elder and some of these guys have done a pretty good job on kick returns, but Duke Johnson was one of the best in the nation on kick returns. Here is Elder. The freshman spun around using the B button. And finally corralled inside the 30, but there is a flag at the 30-yard line. During the return, holding number 56, 10 yard penalty, first down. It's on Rafael Kirby, Miami ball when we come back. Morris finds Herb Waters, and Waters with a first down across the 30 yard line to about the 34. A 17 yard pickup, Herb Waters Having a nice game so far. Six catches, 50 yards. And that's what Miami's doing. They're going a lot of empty, five wide receivers, and then their slot receivers are matched up on linebackers for Duke. And right now, it's a tremendous mismatch. Here's Crawford out of the eye. Up the middle, and he's spun down at the 36, a gain of two. So Miami wants to go five wide with... The linebackers for Duke needing to cover very fast, quick slot receivers because Duke wants to remain in more zone coverage. And then when Miami wants to run it, they condense it, put a couple of tight ends, and just smash it up in there. Safety blitz from Duke. Miami picks it up. Morris finds Crawford. He's got a first down across midfield. And Dallas Crawford Picks up 18 yards. Well, the blitzer was Jeremy Cash, and Crawford ended up catching the pass. 
Jeremy Cash is going to come, and then Crawford is going to catch the ball right out in that vacated zone. A very good job of pickup by Clive Walford, and a very good job of finding the void by Stephen Morris. And Morris has gone over the 7,000-yard mark for his career in terms of passing yards. Only three other Miami quarterbacks can claim that. Ken Dorsey, Ja'Cory Harris, and Heisman Trophy winner Gino Toretto. Crawford breaks the tackle. Dives across the 40-yard line. Nice run by Dallas Crawford. Give him seven. Stephen Moore, as you can see right there, the numbers down a little bit in completion percentage and the interceptions, you know, over his career. That's what he's had to try to overcome. And this year without his big play guys in, in Dorsett and Johnson, it's a bigger task down the stretch here. And, you know, he hasn't been healthy really since September. Certainly factors into it. Morris downfield. That's tipped and incomplete. Devon Edwards factoring into that play as well. Boy, he has been everywhere for Duke. There is a penalty marker. Rough the passer. Number 84 defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that's a break for Miami. Poor play by Kenny on a Nicky. Yeah, he's their pressure guy. He's going to come off, and actually he's going to get up underneath late and it's just too late he comes underneath the block and just continues and is probably a half a step too slow it wasn't egregious but it was a personal foul i'll tell you what this miami offensive line has done an outstanding job in pass protection so far today stephen morris has had time on pretty much all of his throws he's had time to kind of assess the field yeah. and read the defense it takes a long time to just run around that massive offensive line And Morris with time finds Hearns and he's bumped out of bounds by Fields a gain of five yards Alan Hearns has really come into his own as a senior he's become the unquestioned number one receiver on this team three 100 yard games this year after none over the early part of his career and here he has more receiving yards this season than he did the last two years combined and then second in about six and Miami condenses it down with multiple tight ends probably to run it downhill again Gus Edwards Gus the bus in the game at tailback for Miami three tight ends right there Edwards plows through finally taken down inside the 10 yard line Singleton and Fox were there it's first and goal that's what the coaching staff likes from Gus Edwards they say he has a combination of speed and power he just needs more reps he's a freshman well and if he could pass protect better he could probably play more that's the one thing that's holding his playing time down but you saw the effort right there good vision to cut it back late first and least, goal from the eight excuse me this is what duke fears defensively is miami just rolling downhill with that big offensive line morris to the end zone incomplete intended for waters he was covered by cash well, we saw it in the North Carolina game where Miami escaped with a win down the stretch. It wasn't Morris. It was really the run game with Dallas Crawford where Miami was able to churn out yards. We saw it against Wake Forest as well. You know, this Miami running game is pretty good, even though the passing game gets a lot of the attention. game the last couple of weeks that's been a different story the opponents do factor into that though Florida State and Virginia Tech play action Morris in trouble and he skates out of bounds remember he's got that ankle Achilles injury and there's a flag at the end of the play After the play, unsportsmanlike, number 17, offense, 15-yard penalty. The down counts, third down. And that's on Stephen Morris. Let's take a look at what happens at the tail end of the play. And Morris actually showed more mobility on that play than I thought, and the somewhat late hit by Fox out of bounds, and Morris took exception to it, 
and toss the ball at him maybe at the end right there. Not a very smart play by a very veteran quarterback. Cost his team dearly. So now Miami backed up to the 25-yard line. And remember, they have a kicker and Gudis, who's just 2 of 5 from beyond 40 this season. Penalty starting to pile up for Miami. Morris again flushed. He's going to try to run with it. And Morris gets to the 15-yard line. He gets 10. The last two plays, Kelly, the first time we've seen Duke able to flush Morris out of that pocket and make him move. Yeah, I think that certainly is a key. We talked about it to start this game. The more they can make 17 move, the better it's going to be for Duke defensively. And you're right, two successful plays right there. Great victory to hold Miami to a field goal attempt on that drive. That had touchdown written all over it. Gudis from 32. He's already connected from that distance once today. Nails this one, so second field goal of the game for Matt Gudis, a sophomore out of California, and Miami with a six-point lead with 4.42 to go in the half. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by Wrangler. Real. Comfortable. Jeans. Guaranteed. Monday Night Football, Patriots, Panthers, 825 Eastern on ESPN. The wheels of progress haven't been very active lately. But because of business people like you, things are beginning to get rolling. And Regions is here to help, making it easier with the expertise and service to keep those wheels turning. From business loans to succession planning, we want to be your partner moving forward. So switch to Regions, and let's get going, together. Energizer Max batteries are designed to hold power for up to 10 years. With the help of Power Seal technology, you'll always have power when you need it most. That's positive energy. This is the computer ICU. It's what happens to your computer when it gets infected, slows down, and crashes. And if you don't do something, your computer could wind up here in the computer graveyard. But it could be saved with MyCleanPC.com. Is your computer running slow? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes, and crashes? Then go to MyCleanPC.com for your free diagnosis today. Then just activate the MyCleanPC.com software to fix it in minutes. And computer specialists are available while you're online. The best thing about MyCleanPC.com was it had a free diagnosis. My computer is 100% faster. You know immediately what the problem is, and the problem is solved right then and there. Download your free diagnosis today at MyCleanPC.com. The history of Duke football, part one, the glory days, 1931 to 1950, 19 winning seasons in that span. Wallace Wade coached 16 of those years. He had 15 winning seasons. Duke joined the ACC in 1953. Very good in the conference in their first 13 seasons. And then the dark ages from 1966 to 1986. Just a winning record five times. You'll have to stay tuned for part two, which includes the age of Steve Spurrier and a brief Duke renaissance and then David Cutcliffe most recently 13 and 9 since the start of last season and he has made Duke football relevant again. Another touch back on the kick by O'Donnell. We check in with Dari Noka. Guys, Auburn and Georgia now into the second quarter. Auburn up 13-0, trying for a seventh straight win. Todd Gurley takes the handoff for the Bulldogs into the end zone. 13-7, nine minutes to go in the first half. Auburn leading. 
You know, it's interesting, Anish, we see Anthony Boone coming back in and kind of speculating during the break in this really a two-minute type situation, four-minute, three timeouts. Anthony Boone has way more experience in this part of the game than Brandon Kinnett does. Here's Jawan Thompson on first down, and Thompson gets it to the 29. How about the praise that Dave Cutcliffe heaped on to Jawan Thompson, a senior who basically midseason said he was okay with a move to linebacker. He's still going to play running back a little bit. He'll also come in at linebacker. Dave Cutcliffe called him the most unselfish player in college football. Boone's going to keep this one, and he swarmed. After a short pickup, it'll bring up third down. Well, it's interesting. We saw Anthony Boone come in for this, you know, late second quarter situation, but Brandon Kinnett is tailor-made for this short yardage right now, so we see number 18 coming back in. This is how number 18 Brandon Kinnett got on the field early in the year before Anthony Boone's injury. Here's Kinnett. He'll throw it. He's got Deaver. And he backs his way out of bounds after picking up a first down. We saw a similar play connect to Deaver in the Virginia game in the second half when Kinnett came in on a third and short. And that ended up going for a touchdown. And now we see Anthony Boone back in again, I think, just more advanced at this situational point in this game with short time going into the halftime with three timeouts still left for Duke. This is still a mismatch they have to get to sooner or later. This is Josh Steed. He's got some speed. Sneed into the secondary. And he's to the 32-yard line. A gain of 32. Duke wants to go quickly as Miami makes some personnel changes on defense. And Sneed is that big play guy. He's the 0-60 to 60 guy, and you can see it on that play. They'll go back to Sneed right up the middle. And he's to the 29-yard line, a gain of three. This Duke running game has been outstanding in the first half, 146 yards. There's Crowder. He's tackled that time in space by Thurston Armbrister. Horn Elder. Elder was there as well. Third and short. Here comes Brandon Kinnett. I really like the, the mix of those two guys. Kinnett, the short yardage guy, and then Anthony Boone, a little more experience in the three-minute situation. Don't fall asleep on number 18 being able to throw the football. This time, Cutcliffe will run. He picks up a first down. He's got more inside the 15-yard line. Finally brought down by Armbrister, a gain of 12. Very good vision by Kinnett on that play. That was a power play, actually designed quarterback run to the left. His eyes said there's much more room to the right, and that's where Kinnett went. And now Boone back into the game. Boone's going to keep it. Tries to get to the outside, chased down by Shayon Green. And Boone's close to another first down. Ball on the three-yard line. It'll be second and one. We are talking about, don't forget about Kinnett being able to throw it. Well, don't forget about the fact that number seven, Anthony Boone, is a true dual-thread guy. He has more quick tw twitch speed to the edge. Boone to the air for Crowder. Incomplete third and one and let's see if Kinnett comes back into the game here well, this has Kinnett written all over it this is like what NC State did to Duke last week rotating the quarterbacks in and out but Kinnett has made his money throughout his career at Duke on these sorts of situations third and short goal line situations Kinnett straight up the middle into the end zone, his second rushing touchdown of the game.
watching game day this morning. Chris Felica, the Bear, our top-level researcher, was the guest picker. He, along with Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit, all picked Duke to win this game. There's a culture change that's been going on in Durham. This Duke team is relevant. They're for real, and they've got a one-point lead. I've got it, sweetie. Forty-year-old tradition to keep. I hope we make it. We'll make it. Winter is the season to bring family together. Visit the Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event for the best offers of the season, including an Infinity Q50 for $369 a month. I love pink. Pink's my favorite. Our favorite. We race for pink. Introducing new Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. From now until the end of the year, a portion of each sale benefits living beyond breast cancer to empower women affected by breast cancer. Raspberry 5-Hour Energy is available for a limited time, so get yours now. I ski with pink. I can't get enough pink. Come on, everyone. Buy Raspberry 5-Hour Energy benefiting living beyond breast cancer. Come on, let's support pink. Looks good, doesn't it? When it's time to talk security for your business, talk to the business security leader. Tyco Integrated Security. We'll do a security review of your business to understand your needs, customize an integrated solution that meets your specific challenges, and deliver it all with responsive local service and a personal passion to help you protect your business. We'll even give you the power to manage it all right from the palm of your hand. Call us for our free security review. Tyco Integrated Security. Safer, smarter, Tyco. Let's not wait for Black Friday. Let's do an upgrade. Let's pull up the A-list, find the one. Let's double down on double doors. Let's shop, let's save, let's do it early. The Black Friday crowds can have their day. We'll already have our appliances. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. These Maytag or GE Energy Star washers, your choice, just $3.99. With Kelly Stauffer and Ishraf tonight on ABC, Stanford visits USC. The Cardinal coming off that big win last Thursday against Oregon. Stanford has won four in a row against the Trojans, and Ogeron 4 1 is USC's interim head coach. Brandon can have 27 career rushing touchdowns, one away from tying Tom Davis's record. Tom Davis, by the way, played from 1941 to 1944. Kinnett today has run for two scores. He's thrown for another. And Duke's got a one-point lead. Here's Corn Elder. Bottled up inside the 20-yard line. Darren Oka tells us what's on tap for halftime. I will do that as soon as I tell you this, guys. Georgia and Auburn after Todd Gurley made it 13-7. Nick Marshall in from six for Auburn, and they lead it 20-7 on the Plains over Georgia. Now, coming up at half, Kevin Carter going to join me. We'll show you that overtime thriller that knocked Virginia Tech into a three-loss team in the ACC. Jameis Winston looks awfully good right now, and we'll get you around the top 25. Let's see what Miami can do in the two-minute drill. Empty set. Here on first down, Morris's throw complete to Hearn to the 30-yard line. A first down, a gain of 13. And all three timeouts left. They have a lot of time, and obviously Morris as a senior has had a ton of time in this type of situational football. Five wide again. Four-man rush from Duke. Morris completes to Walford, tackled immediately by Edwards. It's a gain of six. Clock continues to run. And either after a big play or when it gets under a minute, typically is when teams like to burn their first time out. Remember, Stacy Coley has not come back into this game after being injured on a kick return. Right now, he's Miami's top vertical threat. Morris throws far side, incomplete. Intended receiver was Walford, and that was Edwards breaking it up. So third and four. 
And the crowd here sensing that this is a big moment. The drop pass creates a third and four situation. And once again, Duke's defense has an opportunity to get off the field. Remember, it's the slot area here and here that Miami has been exploiting in the pass game. Here's the blitz. Moore is hit. Incomplete intended for Waters. And Duke's going to get the ball back with three timeouts and 62 seconds to go in the half. Duke was heating him up defensively. Calvi Brown came basically clean from his position right here. Kind of decoying him. He's going to come, excuse me, clean to Stephen Morris. Very well designed. It was a late show of pressure, and Brown comes clean onto Morris. Jamison Crowder deep for Duke. Two punt return touchdowns this season. He signals fair catch at the 23-yard line. Storylines in this game. Miami jumped out to the fast start. Stacy Coley, a 78-yard punt return. That made it 10-0. Coley would later leave the game with an injury on a kick return. That Miami turnover led to this. Brandon Kinnett to Shaq Powell. And then Kinnett rushing it in. He's got two rushing touchdowns. He's thrown for another. And Duke's got a one-point lead. The Blue Devils have won five in a row. They've clinched a winning season for the first time since 1994. They're bowl eligible in back-to-back -back seasons. And looking to win eight games for the first time since 94 as well. That's Jalay Duncan for a pickup of five. And Duke does not want to get greedy here, obviously, but three timeouts in about 50 seconds. And remember, Duke will receive to start the second half. Yeah, they're going to be cautious, but you have time to get something going. They don't look like they're interested, however. Remember, turnovers have been an issue for this offense the last couple of weeks. Eight of them, in fact. The surprising thing is Duke was able to win those games despite the turnovers as they'll just run it up the middle again. And it appears David Cutcliffe is uh, content to let the clock run out and go into halftime with a lead against Miami. Maybe not. Yeah, I would be tempted after a good start on that drive with three timeouts. And the Time kicker, Will Monday has, or excuse me, Ross Martin has incredible range. So I would think that you can do something a little here. You can work the sidelines. You want to be careful, but with three timeouts, the middle of the field is in play as well. You got to watch out, though, about making a careless pass. Anthony Boone, we've seen this the last couple of games where he's thrown seven interceptions. Duke can ill afford a turnover, but you mentioned the kicker, Ross Martin. We had Duke against Virginia Tech last month. Martin, right before halftime, drilled a 53-yarder that probably would have been good from about 65. And we're hearing from probably 60 would be at least acceptable in this game. And you have to trust Anthony Boone right here to make the right decision. And if you can't trust him, he shouldn't be playing. And he's in the game for a reason. And I think they're going to try to make some hay here and try to at least give an opportunity to get somewhere around that 40-yard line. Two timeouts, 17 seconds to go. Boone under pressure. And he's set back at the 25-yard line. All of what we talked about, Anisha, is officially moved. off the table. Olsen Pierre got in there along with Kamalu, and we go to halftime. They've been dreaming in Durham for the last few weeks. They've got a one-point lead. A trip to the ACC championship game.